It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. A tie? All right, I guess. Take Command Who podcast from Odyssey it, Sports. Uh, that's Logan Paulson. I'm Craig Hoffman. Eric Bickle of the Sports Junkies uh, predicted a 16-16 tie. It was the last of the Junks predictions on our Countdown to Kickoff show this morning. And uh, we laughed at it because, like, who picks a tie? The yeah, correct people person. Do that. Uh, yeah. I, by the way, I needed. I, I had a. Nobody cares, but I had a. I had a four leg parlay that I missed by one Saquon Saquon Barkley receiving yard, and the Commanders actually pulling that out. Uh, but I was. I felt so good throughout so much of that. I was getting the things I needed. The game was unfolding the way I thought, and then, and then it ended in a tie. And Logan, here's the thing. For me, emotionally speaking, in the moments after this game has concluded, it feels appropriate. It feels like those were two teams that played well. Maybe I'm just that deep emotionally into the World Cup and like I've accepted draws and ties Mm -hmm. as a a part of my being. Uh, But maybe two teams that played pretty well uh, had each had their moments within the game that are actually fairly evenly matched when you take some of the strengths of one and the weaknesses of the other. And... uh, Ultimately, it feels kind of right as wrong as ties feel in the NFL. Yeah, and I do feel like if this was not uh, Washington's best game by any stretch of the imagination, so I don't feel like they deserve to win. They probably should have lost this game. And so the fact that they were able to kind of galvanize and show that resolve late in the game to come out with a tie, I thought was outstanding. You know, those completions to Curtis Samuel, uh, the touchdown to Jahan to tie it up, I thought showed a lot of character. You know, they had a whole bunch of holding calls, like – weird special teams penalties two kind of disastrous special teams penalties that should have completely sh- like reshaped the outcome of the game but they were able to overcome those great job by the defense kind of stepping up at key moments in the fourth quarter um and you know like that i think that's where i fell on it i think that if you look at the third quarter you say man this team should lose this game and then they kind of righted the ship and did an excellent job which um, kudos to them. Kudos to that team and kudos to their composure. Obviously, a tie is not ideal, but I, I kind of am with you. Like it went from a, they shouldn't win this game to fighting, clawing, scratching, getting back into the game, showing some of the weapons they have from an offensive standpoint. I still think Taylor, I mean, puts the ball in harm's way way too much. Like there was a couple on that last little drive where it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it could have swung this way or could have swung that way, and it could have easily been an interception which um tough deal but it didn't and they were able to come out with a tie right i mean but at the same time taylor 27 of 41 275 two touchdowns no picks he also takes five sacks um and on all of them i don't think you look at it and go like oh he really messed up there maybe as we break down the tape later in the week you might say a protection situation but like if Carson's in that game, not to make it a Carson Taylor referendum, but like that's another nine sack kind of game. And so there's just stuff to Heineke does that keeps you alive, even though sometimes when he keeps it alive, he then puts the ball in harm's way. But, you know, you say they don't deserve to win, you know, and you look at some of the statistics offensively, Robinson 21 for 96. That's a winning formula. He averaged four, six a carry. Gibson, another nine for 39, averaged four, three. Samuel, three carries for 23, averages seven, seven, although uh, most of that comes on the 21 yarder. But they target Terry 12 times. He's got eight for 105 in the touchdown. Dotson finds the end zone. Samuel gets seven targets. Like they, they had an offensive game plan that, worked and in fact like my biggest frustration for them offensively was that last screen they called on the third down to to Curtis I think it was in overtime on that yeah. possession or was that yeah. the last possession of regulation that I think it was overtime yeah. and I'm just like you've gotten the man coverage that you wanted all day just runs like run a pass pattern that allows someone to win uh Jahan or Curtis pick I think one because they're going to put the pressure there in that situation I, sure but like they he's I trust Taylor there they've won quickly they don't run screens well part of the reason the screens are even in is because Cosme's in this week at guard and he leaves with an ankle injury uh look in the better. second half we'll say look better with him in there though yeah the first for sure end look good he, but he's out for that screen so your point is still uh, so so it's just like man they had some of that stuff but all in all I think you know a good offensive game plan that should have netted you a couple more points. Joey Sly misses one that's within his range. If that's the case, it's a 23-20 game, uh, perhaps. And, you know, you never yeah. know how the, the end goes. But uh, you, you do enough to win. Defensively, it's defensively it's a weird game, man. Yeah. Um, 
Daniel Jones going into the final drive for the Giants in regulation, which is one of the all-time boneheaded play-calling drives I've ever seen in the NFL, um, has one incompletion on the day, and it is a spike uh, to stop the clock at the end of the first half. He then throws three straight incompletions, which is the only way the commanders can get in position to win the game in regulation, uh, is if you go three and out on three incompletions where they don't use any timeouts, and that's exactly what they did, trying to take it all at once, which was wild decision-making by the Giants coaching staff. Uh, Danny Johnson has a couple of nice pass breakups in there. Uh, They get the ball back and ultimately can't do anything with it. They can't do anything with their one drive in overtime. Um, but it's just a weird game defensively. And I, the last thing I'll say is offensively, obviously the penalties matter a ton, but yeah. defensively, you know, they, but by the same token, they held him to 200 yards on the day. Um, but he completed all, quite literally almost every pass that he threw. And it so it's, it's a way, weird, it? It, it, a it weird felt game. Different. Yeah. It felt, it felt really different. I, and I think, so kudos to, to Dable and the offensive coordinator for the giants. I think they did uh, Kafka. I think they did a really nice job finding a wrinkle you know we talked about what the wrinkle was going to be and uh you know against the dallas cowboys it was this keeper game where they're booting out of the pocket and i thought well you know how do they get to that because obviously the the solution is just kind of run right at the quarterback and and force the ball out of his hands and what they did i thought was was really brilliant is they said well we're going to just motion a tight end and then basically down block the defensive end ensuring the edge for the quarterback quarterbacks on the edge he's he's getting the ball out of his hand quickly you're not stressing the interior offensive line of the new york of the New York Giants offensive line, which struggled tremendously against Payne and Allen, kind of any time it was a drop back passing situation. So good job by them. And then also you allow Jones to run the football from that standpoint. So I just thought that was a really nice uh, wrinkle by them and we knew it was coming. And so to see it unfold that way, I thought was really interesting. And, you know, Washington really didn't have a, a good response for that. I mean, they were doing that on like second and 12, third and 10. Like that was the play that they were going to. So, um, you know, kudos to them. And I think, we again, that was really cool to see that, like, football chess match kind of unfolding in real time. And I also thought, you know, they did a good job. Uh, the defense generally kind of just staying with it, sticking with it. Um, Casey Tuhill, some of the defensive ends kind of figured out what the game plan was. And you could see they were playing that tight six, which is a tough spot to play that technique from. And they're beating the guys outside. James Smith Williams gets a holding call, right? Uh, Montez is kind of rushing really vertical up the field, forcing him to bow back, allowing the linebackers to match the concept. So to see that kind of in-game adjustment by the players, maybe they're talking about that on the sideline. It was just cool, just cool to see that. And then it, when a game of inches like that, it was a big deal. I, I'm, I will say, like you said, I think B. Rob, excellent job. Jahan, Terry, you know Taylor. I think the just got to be a little bit more fastidious with the football. But overall, I think um, it's the penalties that absolutely smoke you and the pass protection, which is something, again, you and I talked about. We said, what is your protection plan? They had one, but again, like Taylor gets you out of a couple, and some of those are just free runners to the quarterback, and that's what Wink does to you. And, you know, they're playing this team again in a couple of, in a couple of weeks. So they need to figure out, they need to clean that up a little bit if they're going to get that uh, to win this football game. So how would you describe, like you say, there was a plan. You can see it. Most of us can't uh, based off of your expertise. What was the protection plan and what did they do poorly in it? So I think one of the, there's two ways to go with any kind of protection plan. And one is to get an empty or spread them out and say, match us up. We'll know who's coming and we'll get the ball out of our hands quick, which is what I thought they were going to do. But on a couple of third downs, I think two specifically, they leave tight ends in and they leave the backs in, which is fine. That's a very viable pass protection philosophy. However, when you do that, like a tight end is a fine pass protector, but they're not an excellent pass protector. And in third down situations, you don't want John Bates blocking uh, Kayvon Thibodeau or Logan Thomas blocking Aziz Ojolari. You don't. That's not good. Don't do that. I think at this point, those of us who have the slow motion replays ingrained in our head now know what was wrong with the plan. Right. And so, again, if you're going to keep them in, you want your big guys on big guys. You know, you want your 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 offensive linemen blocking defensive ends and then your tight ends and backs kind of as auxiliary pieces to that. And this is the same. They kind of trotted out a very similar plan to what they did against Detroit. And there are similar holes. And this is part of the problem of going max protection with tight ends and backs is they're good at pass protection, but they're not great. So <clears throat> I would say... And they did, they did versions of both, so I think Scott thought it out. 
The other thing I think Wink did, which was really good, is he knew that um, the commanders squeeze inter- into um, an internal blitz out of empty. So, like, if you're getting, uh, like, let's say you have four down linemen and you bring the Sam and the Will, the offensive line squeezes it and they leave the defensive end for the quarterback. And <clears throat> I thought Wink did a nice job of scheming pressures up, scheming simulated pressures up that simulated that look where the offensive line would have to squeeze and then not actually bringing those guys and getting free runners off the edge. I think there was almost a safety at the end of regulation or an overtime. Where Taylor yeah, it was in overtime. Like the two-yard line. Again, simulated pressure, squeeze down, Kayvon Thibodeau untouched off the edge. Same thing with Aziz Ozolari early in the game. So there's four pressure slash sacks right there of just Wink kind of being one step ahead of the game in terms of protection and also understanding where the weak spots are and getting good matchups. So, Yeah, um, and that kills you because you have opportunities. I mean, this is Heineke's yeah. highest yardage game in forever. Um, you know, we kind of a little bit of that two minute drive you always like to talk about. Well, a there's a couple of things I think that that happened here. One, we were joking before the game that you know it felt like uh, I think the over under that that bet MGM had it was like 207, something like that. And I was like, man, considering uh, what Heineke's done in the past couple of weeks, that feels high. That yeah. feels that feels tremendously out of reach. He in the last, let's see if I get the game log up real quick. He has not broken 200 yards since Philly, and he's done it. Uh, and then he had 149 against Minnesota. This is his highest yardage total since the win over Indianapolis, which he also had a two-minute drive late in. And that's that's what happens when you get these two-minute drives uh, late in games, uh, such as the game-tying drive that he finishes off with the touchdown to Jahan, you can actually pad your stats a little bit. Not in a way that's like meaningless. It's not stat padding, I guess, in that way. Uh, but the stats are going to look better because he had to go out there and earn it, and he did. Um, he got really screwed by, and he and they uh, offensively got really screwed by those sacks that you talked about, uh, specifically in overtime. Uh, that That is a, although I guess they, they overcame that one to get out of that hole a little bit. But then I think that's when they, they eventually got to the screenplay that I hated. Um, I, think where, that was, I, think that, I think that was the last, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, that was the last drive um, that they had where they punted it back to New York. The, the yeah. sack before that, it was a different so they sack. go, yeah. they go uh, sack on first down by Thibodeau. Giants call timeout at one twenty eight. Robinson gets the nice carry. They actually, it's a nice call by Scott yeah. um, because Thibodeau, who's a rookie, comes flying off the edge again. Like, oh, I'm going to get him. Yeah, uh, back at the ten yard line, and uh, that is a. Uh, that's a nice little gain there. Uh, it was kind of like a draw play, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then Gibson rushes for five yards on third and ten. Uh, they just kind of at that point punt the game away. Yeah. Uh, in a in a very literal sense, instead of going for it on third and ten. Uh, I guess it was the other drive in overtime. Yeah, it was the yeah. drive before. Yeah. Yeah, the Which other drive in overtime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has this the screenplay that I hate just because. Like, it's not something you do well. And you've had, what I was going to say, though, is you have all these opportunities in man-to-man coverage where you have Dotson winning. Uh, Dotson, the most involved he's been in a long time. Samuel has a bunch of monster catches. Uh, Terry gave Fabian Moreau absolute fits all day long. And you just don't have the opportunity to take advantage because the pressure is so intense. And that's that's what Martindale is doing on purpose. Uh, it is a good job by him. Um, it's a high risk thing. I mean, commanders in this game run 82 plays. They have 41 minutes time of possession, which obviously is enhanced a little bit by when they keep the ball in overtime, but they were already above their league leading average by like mid fourth quarter. I think before they had their game tying drive, they had already, uh, accumulated almost 35 minutes time of possession. So, um, the commanders kind of did what they want to do. They've just got to, you know, if Sly gets the field goal and they can convert one other drive, like that's a 30 point performance, but that's, you can say that a lot of weeks. Um, That's kind of the thing with the NFL is like, you're always one or two plays away from having a monster day. Um, But at the end of the day, the giants were able to make just enough to keep them, uh, you know, keep, keep the distance and then uh, ultimately pass them. And then, you know, commanders tie it up and that's where it stays. 